Welcome to the November 2024 Tampa Bay Real Estate Market Report. We're excited to bring you this information because we know that a lot of people in Tampa Bay want to know what in the heck is going on with the real estate market after we had two devastating hurricanes hit us. I'm going to provide this information to you, the market statistics, and we're going to also provide important information that you need to know about FEMA 50% rule, what the cities and counties are doing, and give you options on how to move forward. So please make sure and stick around to the end of the video as we give you those details. My name is Rachel Sartain Tenpenny. I am the founder of the Tenpenny Collection, and let's dive into the numbers. This month, we are only going to focus on Pinellas County. If you live in a different area and you wanna know what's happening in your local market, please leave me a message below with the, your area and I will make sure I get those numbers over to you. We're also going to reference August a lot in this episode because August is kind of our pre-storm statistic. So let's look at the single family home sales in Pinellas County. In August, there were 854 units sold. That was definitely impacted by the storms. Uh, there was a 32% decrease with September and October only having about 640 homes sold. And that's to be expected. If you had a house under contract in September and it was flooded, that contract was probably canceled. So we did expect to see that, but we didn't know how it would impact our values. So we're gonna go back again to August. The average sales price was 688,000. It dropped significantly in September to 592,000, but it did start coming back a little bit in October. The average sales price was $617,000. What I also found interesting was I wanted to look, there's uh, been a lot of conversation about people fire selling and leaving the state. So I wanted to look at properties that are in a flood zone and their average sales price versus homes that are not in a flood zone and what is their average sales price. And I was shocked to see the difference. So uh, the average sales price of a home in a flood zone is $979,000 as of October the average price of a home in a non-flood zone was only $522,000. That's a big difference. And it just kind of goes to show that people still want that Florida waterfront lifestyle. A couple other things to take into consideration, inventory was significantly impacted by the storms. So it was down about 20%. Right now we have about 2,600 homes on the market. What was interesting to see was 837 homes came off the market since September 25th. So people had their homes flooded, their neighborhoods had trees fallen or there's debris on the streets and it's just not worth having it on the market right now. So 837 homes came off the market. If you live in one of these areas that was significantly impacted by the storms, you're probably trying to figure out what to do. What is your value? What is your land value? What is your home value? Should you renovate the home and move back into it? Should you renovate the home and sell it? Should you sell it for land value? I want you to know that I am not seeing the so-called fire sale that I've heard people talk about. Actually, I've had somebody give me a number of what a neighbor sold their home for. I looked it up in the tax record and it was incorrect. So I'm not seeing fire sales. On the contrary, I'm seeing property owners are very resilient and holding on and they're not letting their properties go for dirt cheap. I guess I shouldn't say dirt cheap since it is land value, so technically it is dirt cheap. But it, it's just something I want you to know that we're not seeing these things. We're seeing property values stay strong. And if you want to know what your land value is worth, I've done spreadsheets for many of the neighborhoods and I know the price per square foot of lots, whether they're on the water or off the water, and I'm happy to provide that information to you. If you are renovating your home, you need to know this. You need to pull permits. Okay, so NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program, provides grants to every county. And in order for the county to get that grant money, to get those funds, they have to uphold certain criteria that FEMA has. 
And part of that is the FEMA 50% rule, which states that if your home is, is non-conforming, if it's in a flood zone and it's not built to the elevation or conforming to the FEMA standards, that you are limited to renovate that home up to only 50% of the structure value. I know that's a lot of information, but it's really easy to find out how much your structure value is. You need to go on the Pinellas County Property Appraisers website. I'll put the link in the caption below. Search your address and a toolbar will come up and the, in the tools it says FEMA slash WLM letter. In that letter, you have a structure value and you will also see your 50% substantial improvement value. If your damage was more than that 50%, you're probably not going to be able to renovate the home. You still have options. <laughs> You'll hear me say that a lot. There are tons of options out there. Um, and in some areas like St. Pete, they're even more stringent. So they're not doing the FEMA 50% rule, they have a 49% rule. So if, you're, if the damage to your property is greater than 49% of the structure value, you are not going to be able to renovate. Your options, you can tear it down, but if you have a mortgage, you can't just tear down the property because that is the bank's collateral. You can raise the home and there are grants and funds for helping you pay for raising the home. Unfortunately, that is a very long process. Um, and you could sell it at land value, plus your insurance money might make you whole. These are just some of the things to take into consideration. If you're renovating the home and you, and you have the ability to renovate the home and you're wanting to sell it after you renovate it, please, 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 pull the permits, but also get a mold inspection done. And I recommend getting the mold inspection done before you put the drywall back in. I've seen a lot of these homes, they've been remediated, they've hired companies, they've hired crews to come in, they've cut out the drywall, removed the floorings, removed some of the tile, you know, the kitchen cabinets, the appliances, but they didn't bring in the proper air scrubbers, they didn't dry it out properly, and they didn't treat the wood, so the mold is still growing. You need to have that mold inspection done before you start renovating the home. Also, if you're renovating the home to sell it, uh, it's important that you know what buyers are going to look for, what's going to scare them away, what's going to attract them, we are here to help you make those choices. As a real estate professional, if I were to bring a buyer to a home that's been flooded in the past, the first thing I'm going to look for is the permit history. If you did not pull permits, I'm gonna talk about the city of St. Pete, every city is a little different. The city of St. Pete is not writing code violations right now. They said they're not doing that until January 1st. Every house in Pinellas County has been tagged by FEMA if it flooded. So the cities know if your home flooded. The cities know if you've done work without permitting. A code violation, if you do not follow through, if you do not do permitting or after the fact permits, that code violation could lead, lead to a lien on the property. I'm bringing a buyer to your home. I'm looking at permit history. I don't see any and it's January, February then I have to warn that buyer, hey, there might be a potential lien coming on this property. So these are the things that you want to make sure and avoid. If you wanna sell your home, you don't need additional obstacles, you need less of them. So do the right thing, pull the permit. Also, there are a lot of investors out there and investors are great, we need them right now because a lot of people wanna sell their home for land value and no one's gonna buy that except an investor. But then there are also some investors that just want to get a great deal, want to get the cheapest thing. Well, actually all investors just want to get the cheapest price, but um, I want to protect you. So there's a couple things to think about. If you get an unsolicited offer on your home, then they might not really understand your land value. You might not know your land value. That unsolicited offer, you want to make sure that they cannot assign the contract. So what does that mean? So somebody gives you an offer, it's an assignable contract. That means they can, 
is flip the contract to somebody else and they're no longer liable and they don't have to close. So that's what we want to look for. If they're assigning the contract, that means they are probably getting money for that assignment. That is money that you could be putting in your pocket. So you also want to be cautious of that. If you get an offer on your property and you want somebody to review it, I've been offering to do this for free. So I can review the contract with you and make sure, first of all, that it's a good value for your property. And second, that all the proper elements of the contract are there to protect you. Overall, I'm seeing property values hold really strong and I'm seeing property owners make great decisions for themselves. You have a ton of options and everybody's situation is unique. So if you want somebody just to bounce ideas off of, I'm here for that. You know, it's still, it's still very difficult driving the streets and seeing so much debris out there. And it's kind of like, okay, well, once the debris is gone, then are we going to forget that all these homes are empty? The drywall has been cut out, no appliances in there, no kitchen. And where's everybody living? And so there's pros and cons with that, but I think it's been, it's taken its emotional toll on all of us. And my goal is just to make sure that you have the best information so that you can make great financial choices for you and your family. I know this is just our monthly market statistics, but we are doing these videos almost every other day on social media. Um, and we're making video content based off the questions that homeowners are asking. So please make sure and follow us. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you wanna have a conversation about your unique situation, we're gonna put all of our contacts in the details below. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope it provided some useful information.